بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity to witness this Mubarak month of Ramadan. We need to make all effort out that our intention behind every amal. And those amal are not restricted to a specific time, specific place, specific people, specific conditions. But I'm doing it because it's the Amr of Allah and I make a niyat that till I die, I will continue doing this amal. When a person continues doing amal and they have istiqamah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the pleasure in amal. Hazrat Hassan Basri, rahimahullah, you say, تَفَقَّدُ الْحَلَاوَةَ فِي ثَلَاثِ If you want to look at enjoyment and pleasure in ibadat, then you'll find it in the salat, and in the Qur'an, and in the dhikr, in the tilawat of the Qur'an, in performing salat and taking the name of Allah فَإِنْ وَجَدْتُمُوهَا فَمْضُ وَأَبْشِرُ If you find this, then glad tidings to you فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدُوهَا فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ بَابَكَ مُغْلَقٌ If you don't find this solace, this happiness in ibadah, then know that your door is closed the door between you and Allah is closed. Malana Ilyas was traveling, they reached one place. All the Satis were very tired. They requested to rest, so Malana gave permission. He immediately went in Salah. After they recuperated and they were on their journey, they said, Malana, but you never rested. You must be very tired. He said, what you people got in your sleep and relaxation, I got in my salat. Nabi Alayhi Salaam say, Ya Bilal, arihni, arihni. Oh Bilal, give the adhan, bring pleasure to me, bring enjoyment to me, bring rahat, contentment, solace, pleasure. So we're supposed to be getting that solace in salat, in tilawat, in the a'mal of deen. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah say that aratta an ta'alama ma indaka wa inda ghayrika min mahabbatillah fanzur mahabbat al-Quran min qalbik that if you want to know how much love you have for Allah then look at how much of the love of the Quran you have in your heart so when a person does amal besides them getting this ecstasy and pleasure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakat in their time. Because our greatest challenge today is everybody saying we don't have time. But we don't have time means we don't have barakat in time. Otherwise if you look at the uh, amal of our kabir and mashayikh and what their accomplishments were, then people will be baffled and people will have to say that that was not possible. Uthman radiallahu an used to read the whole Qur'an in a single rakat of Witr Salah. As Abdullah bin Zubair used to make a khatam of the Qur'an in a single night. Sa'id bin Jubair, rahmatullah alayhi, his habit was that he read two rakats of Salah and entire khatam. As Thabit Banani rahmatullah used to read the whole Qur'an in a single day. If, if, if we think so, that one khatam, can we imagine, think about it, one whole khatam every day. If we think so, that was too much, then it is recorded about Abu Sheikh Hanayi rahmatullahi that he used to read two khatams and ten paras, means 70 ajza, 70 paras he used to read in a single night. Forget 70 paras, 7 paras. Let's see if we can even do 7 paras in a single night. And Imam Nawi Rahmatullah if we think so, that that was very far-fetched and impossible. Then in his Kitab al Adhkar, he said, the maximum daily recitation which has been reported was Ibn al-Katib. And his ma'mul was, 
that in a 24 hour day he used to make eight khatams of the Quran. In a 24 hour day he used to make eight khatams of the Quran. If our Iman is strong, then we'll believe it without question. If our Iman is weak, then that concept of Barkat, a Kafir cannot understand the concept of Barkat. And the books of history are filled with these examples, which Ibn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us tawfiq, we'll explain it another time. But just to understand this, as Ibrahim bin Abdul Wahid, Rahimullah you say, أَكْثِرْ مِنْ قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَا تَتْرُكْهُ that make it a habit to recite Qur'an constantly. فَإِنَّهُ يَتَيَسَّرُ لَكَ الَّذِي تَتْلِبُهُ According to the amount that you recite and the amount of tilawat that you make, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all your other matters easy. Allah will put a lot of barakah in all other things. And He says, my experience was, that the days that I used to read a lot of Qur'an, I had more tawfiq to, to spend more time in the field of a hadith, to make a lot of compilations, and I did a lot of work in that day. And the day that I never made tilawat of Qur'an, I found that there was a shortfall and deficiency. It's one of the statements of the uh, Salaf. They say, كُلَّمَا زَادَ حِزْبِي مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ زَادَتِ الْبَرَكَةُ فِي وَقْتِ That I found that the day that I read more Qur'an, there was more barakah in my time. I could do a lot of things in a short span of time. حَتَّى بَلَغَ هِسْبِي عَشْرَةَ أَجْزَى He said to a time where daily I could make 10 Jews khatam, uh, in every three days he would make a khatam of the Qur'an and still all his works and responsibilities were finished. So this time that Allah has given us, amal should not be restricted to this month of Ramadan. Dunya is Darul Asbab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us Darul Imtihan, the Yaqeeni Asbab, we are sure that if I read Qur'an, there'll be barakah in my time. If I read Qur'an, Allah will be happy with me. If I read Qur'an, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْفِرُوا مِنَ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي تُقْرَوْ فِيهِ سُورَةُ الْبَقْرَةِ That the shayateen run out of the houses where Qur'an till how it is made. So, we need to be particular that Allah has sent me in this world for an objective an imtihan, I'm going to answer some questions and there's various stages in Akhir which I will be answerable. I need to be prepared for this imtihan. Otherwise, sh shaitan and nafs, the environment will console us. Don't worry, you have time, you have life, you have health, you have wealth, you have this. But like this global situation, whoever Whoever in mankind, in the world, would have fathomed anything like this to have ever happened. There was a story of four students, they decided to go out for the weekend, Monday was exam, they went to have fun, enjoyed themselves, went to the beach, overslept, missed the exam. Now they were in trouble, what to do? So they decided that let's make up some story. So they, they laced their clothing with grease, etc. They went to the professor and said, Professor, you know what? We went uh, for a family function and we got stuck on the road en route back. Um, we missed the exam. Can we rewrite the exam? So the professor said, no problem. If, if you're so genuine and your excuse is genuine, I don't mind giving you a rewrite. So the next morning, in the exam room, they filled in the question and there was only one question. Which tire did you have a puncture with? So there were four of them. Obviously they never decided and discussed that which tire had a puncture. 
on the alibi in the story, the story was we had a puncture. That's why they were laced with grease. That was 400 marks. So it should not be also, we think so, we got it covered, I got it under control. But in actual reality, I don't have it under control. So one was Zaman, second it was Makkah and the place. The deen is according to a certain place. When a person is a masjid, he's dindar. When he goes to Makkah al Mukarramah for Umrah, then he becomes dindar only in that place. Then he's making tilawah, then he's uh, making tawaf, then he's making ibadah. When he comes back to his home country, Assalamu alaikum deen. Hajj. Person, mashallah, is pious, his hajj is sab. But the day he lands in his home country, Assalamu alaikum deen. That whole hajj, he leaves it behind. It was specific to that place. Person goes in Jamaat, out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mashallah is awake for tahajjud, tilawat, amal, dua, gash, ta'aleem, khidmah, everything. But when he comes back home, then he makes salam to the deen. The deen is specific to that place only. The deen is specific to that place only. Whereas the objective and the purpose is that whatever action we do in must surpass, must supersede the workplace, it must surpass our home, it must surpass the location, it must overshadow every place that we are going. Because Deen is Fisil Mikafa, wherever we go, whenever, however. So it should supersede everywhere else. Deen is not specific to these conditions. A mother used to let her daughter walk in the front and stepdaughter next to her. She would say, Mashallah, what a good mother. She even keeps the stepdaughter nearby her. So somebody asked her one day, that Masha, she said, I'm teaching my daughter to always be ahead of the stepdaughter. She must always be in front of her all the time. So the Amal outside and Amal inside, different. Somebody was uh, making tawaf and he seen somebody by the khilaf of the Multazam crying in, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tears and making dua and he said, you know what, this person looks like a pious buzruk, let me request him for dua. So he waited, when he completed, he went to that person and said, MashaAllah, I've seen you in such a such khushu, concentration, diyan, awareness of Allah. Can you please make a dua for me? And also tell me what dua you are making. He said, you know what, Hajisab, in our country we got the red light and the green light. You know, when I came here, there was so much special, so much things cheap. Forget over buying in my weight that I have, I don't even know I'm going to account to customs. So I was crying to Allah that Ya Allah, please when I go back to my home country, blind the customs. I'm going to walk to the green light, Ya Allah, blind them. So in front of the Baytullah, in front of Allah, one amal outside is what, but inside is what? So Deen, it's specific to that place. One uh, youngster was outside the masjid blasting the sound system. So somebody said, you know what? Please, if you, it's a haram in itself, but outside the masjid. He said, you know what, Chacha? This sound system I bought from Medina Munawara when I was doing my Hajj. You know how much barakat is in the sound system? So we shouldn't be like those youngsters. We think so, we got it under control. لا تجعلوا بيوتكم قبورا Do not make your houses a, a, a maqbara اجعلوا من صلاتكم في بيوتكم أفضل الصلاة المرء في بيته إلا المكتوبة Even men are encouraged, ulama say uh, In today's times we are encouraged to read our sunan and nawafil in the masajid because people don't have the siddha to read it at home but those that who can read it at home besides your first salat hudu sunan Muakkada, Ghair Muakkada, everything should be done at home. So Sahaba, the uh, Amal of the Masjid was his Amal at home. The Masturat have their Musalla, their Masjid. The Amal perpetuates. Maryam radiallahu anha had a Musalla. She had fruits out of season. But that Mahal and environment was so strong that a Nabi of the time when he seen that Anna laki hadha, he got affected. Hunalika da'a Zakariya, then Zakariya alayhi salam made dua to Allah that Mahal environment affected everybody else. 
when she left it mahal and she left it environment and the dunya environment was there then she was told then she said anna yakunu li ghulam that lady who was drawn from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when she was in the environment of the dunya she asked and questioned it how can I get a child walam yamsasni bashar so Sahaba changed the environment wherever they were they took the environment the place with them so much so did Allah praise those places that Allah even praised the bazaars of Sahaba Nabi alayhi salam was saying that أحب البلاد إلى الله مساجدها and the worst places are the bazaars but Nabi alayhi salam was in Masjid al-Nabawi in Madinah Munawara speaking about the bazaars in Madinah Munawara that Allah praised those are the worst places can we imagine the bazaars of today Ulama have made a nukta in a point saying that why was the bazaars the worst places because they are the worst places casinos clubs etc because it was never ever fathomed that a Muslim will go to any of those places there was no need to mention it if we went to the home of a Sahabi and asked where's the Sahabi the wife will say Masjid when is he coming back I don't know today next year forever he'll become Shaheed he's gone to the marketplace yeah, he'll be back now if we come to our houses where's your husband gone work when will he come back I don't know maybe working overtime he's got other responsibilities he's gone to the Masjid yeah, he'll be back now five minutes ten minutes he'll be back so we have to learn that we have to change these environments and the ulama have explained that even your house cannot be a maqbara why the hadith has said that is because in the graveyard nobody has to obey Allah in the house you're supposed to obey Allah one secondly is we cannot read salat by a grave in the houses should be filled with salat number three a person that remembers Allah and doesn't remember is so if that house is not remembering Allah, all the people in those houses are corpses. And number four, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Sheikh uh, Khattabi has mentioned, Don't make your houses a place of sleep and doing nothing and lethargy. But these are marakis of amal. Because sleep is a brother of death. And when you don't do anything, it's like you're dead. So let us see how we can take opportunity in these Mubarak days. Wa akhiru da'awana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.